Hi, Emmanuel. I'm Steve from Oasis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And today we're we're starting to look at Luke's gospel and the way Bible in a year works is that we go through the gospels consecutively, one after another. And uh, what a great way to start the year that is, just with focused attention on Jesus and how he interacted with people and the things that he said and did. And we need to realize that the Gospels aren't a random collection of stories or even worse, fairy tales. They speak eloquently of who Jesus is, where he came from, why he came, and what that can mean for all of us. And each of the Gospel writers is unique. Luke certainly is because he's not Jewish. And one of the things that I want to draw out today from these early verses of Luke is that it's, they're great verses for you if you sometimes struggle with doubts about your Christian faith. To be honest, I think we all do at times. So these early verses, so in these early verses, let's see how Luke brings some, some good news for doubters. He's writing for the benefit of a guy called Theophilus. And we don't know exactly who he is. He was prob probably or possibly involved in the Roman government somewhere. Uh, we don't know if he's a believer or he's exploring the Christian faith, but he has certainly had some teaching. And Luke's heart for Theophilus and therefore for all his readers, including us, is that we will be more sure and certain of our faith. Luke wants to see Theophilus grow and develop. Now Luke is a doctor and he wants to use his precise skills to compile a record of Jesus' life and ministry. I just hope his handwriting was better than the average uh, GP. His emphasis is on detail, accuracy and thoroughness presented in an orderly fashion and his main source is eyewitnesses so that we can know that what we're reading are not stories that got exaggerated as they were passed on. Uh, now we still need to bring faith and trust to the facts presented to us but it helps us so much as we go through Luke to know that our faith is reasonable because it is rooted in well-documented fact. And this is so good for us if we're struggling with doubt. There's so much more we could focus on in these verses at the start of Luke 1. I love reading about angelic visitations, but I want to focus more on Zachariah's response because there is more good news for doubters here. So Gabriel shows up with the amazing news for an elderly Zachariah, not only that he and Elizabeth will have a long desired baby despite their age, but that this will be no ordinary baby. Their son will be the very one who prepares Israel for the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And Gabriel uses a fascinating phrase. He says, your prayer has been heard. Now what prayer is he referring to? He's probably referring to the prayers that Zechariah and Elizabeth prayed for a baby. They would have been prayed many years before and now forgotten. Uh, so I find that so encouraging. God remembers and stores up the prayers that we have made and he can answer them sometimes many years later. But the angel is probably also referring to the prayers that Zechariah has just prayed in his priestly role. He's been praying for forgiveness, blessing and salvation for the Jewish people. And so Gabriel is really announcing two births here. He's uh, announcing the arrival of a son for Zechariah and Elizabeth who will pave the way for the son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will come soon after their son to save their people, to rescue them and to forgive them. I read recently in respect to prayer, this uh, particular statement, if it feels like God has you on hold, don't give up, don't hang up. And uh, sadly, uh, Zachariah had 
hung up on God in respect to that promise of a, uh, of a child or that prayer for a, a, a child. We see it because he, he just didn't believe Gabriel's message. The good news, though, is that even despite that, Gabriel's promise from God that is delivered still stands. It will still be accomplished. And there's the grace of God right there for us in a wonderful way. That's what Jesus was coming to display. His grace trumps our performance and overcomes even our doubt at times. Having said that, just drawing to a close, let's not make this an account, this account an excuse for unbelief. Zechariah missed out. He, he came under God's disap- discipline for a season, being made uh, dumb and, and possibly deaf too. He was literally tongue-tied uh, at a time of great excitement when he and Elizabeth had so much to talk about, so much they could celebrate together, and, and he was stuck in this silent world. That is so different to Mary, who believed Gabriel. We'll come to that in the next uh, day or two. Uh, who believed what the, the message was for her uh, from God. And it, it, and it resulted in such an encounter with God for, for her that it, it resulted in a waterfall of God-glorifying and worshipful speech rather than silence. So let's not miss out. As we journey through Luke, may it banish our doubts and strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hope to see you again soon.